When most of us think of McCarthyism, we think of a bygone era where the American people viewed each other as spies and were untrusting of their neighbors. You know, for a nation that claims to be Christian, they sure chose a very unchristian way of thinking. You know, you're supposed to love thy neighbor, not test their patriotism with a bowl of borscht. But this era is hardly gone. McCarthyism has set its roots so deep into Americanism that it has always existed in our culture. Now, to understand how deeply rooted this insidious mindset really is, we have to go back to the early 1900s. The newly created Federal Reserve had realized that war is beneficial to capitalism. And since they bankrolled, quite literally, Woodrow Wilson's presidency, it was important that he get America into World War I. And at this time in America, there was a, a pretty heavy socialist and communist presence in the country. They stood for worker solidarity and equal rights, and they were vehemently anti-war. Now, Woodrow Wilson made the Espionage Act into law in 1917, which penalized anyone that criticized American militarism with imprisonment. And while he was at it, he also decided to imprison the corpses of the Founding Fathers for writing the First Amendment as well. A pesky little problem that freedom of speech, press, and expression was to a budding fascist president. And really, it's a problem in capitalism because that gives people the right to call out the fascistic nature of capitalism itself. And we can't we can't have that, guys. I mean, there's so many resources that capitalism has to steal from black and brown countries, okay? That's just crazy. You can't... If, if, if people kept criticizing it, then capitalism would be spending more time defending itself than, you know, causing imperialistic pain across the planet. But this piece of legislation was written to condemn the socialists and the communist organizers of the labor movement. In 1918, socialist and labor leader Eugene Victor Debs was arrested for giving a rousing speech in Canton, Ohio. Debs pointed out that the working class are used as cannon fodder for the rich's wars, and we're never really at the table when discussing the terms of peace. I'm, I'm pretty sure some of the treaties of Paris say no fat chicks and no socialists. Yeah, capitalists only see equality in intolerance. They hate everyone that isn't a prim and proper capitalist equally. Okay? Don't 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 ever say capitalism isn't about equality. It's it's equal in its hatred. But that didn't stop Debs or the labor movement. Debs ran for president under the Socialist Party of America and won a million votes from prison. Imagine if he had been on a level playing field. We would likely have seen America's first socialist president. And during the Great Depression of the 30s, it was the communists and the socialists that organized general strikes across the nation. And these strikes were immediately met with state-sponsored violence as the National Guard was called in to fire live rounds at American citizens. And this was under Democrat Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Now, you can call me crazy, but when a government responds to a populace asking for better treatment and pay with armed gunmen, it seems like a, a little bit of an overreaction. Right? It would be like kicking a child down a flight of steps for asking for breakfast. right? And then the parents saying, well, you should have known better. Now, not only has the Espionage Act continued to be used to this very day, attacking journalists like Julian Assange and whistleblowers like Daniel Ellsberg, but you can also see it being used against anyone calling for a general strike against authoritarian corporatists like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and the like. And this is because McCarthyism, the McCarthyism of the Espionage Act is used as a way to champion capitalism as an economic system uh, which is an economic system that believes in endless profits on a finite planet. Now, capitalism also preaches the lie that if you work hard enough, you too could be a billionaire like Bezos. And because of that, strikers and organizers are demonized as people getting in the way of your infinite wealth. 
In reality, Bezos and the like got their riches by abandoning their morals, ethics, and humanity and seeing everything as dollar signs. Their brains are so far removed from humanity that they can't relate to other human beings. They just see meat sacks of currency. The success of the labor movement in the 30s led to the passing of the Wagner Act by FDR, which strengthened unions and allowed them to collectively bargain for the working class. In the 40s, it became imperative that unions had to be depowered so that the oligarchs of the nation can have their cake, the cakes of the working class, and eat all of them too. The Taft-Hartley bill was passed by two Republican senators and Democrat Harry Truman, which put the shackles on unions and pretty much criminalized collective bargaining. This also led to McCarthyism as we know it today. Look, it's, it's really, really difficult to say that a movement whose mission is to empower the working class and create a good life for them is inherently evil. But if the United States can create a boogeyman that they could associate this movement with would mean that the American citizenry would fall in line using fear. And that boogeyman was Russia! The narrative was that the Soviet spies were in America to steal our freedoms and make everyone grow a Stalinesque mustache. Okay, and, and anyone that was a card-carrying member of the Communist Party was a filthy red and needed to be removed from existence. And that's not an exaggeration either. This witch hunt led to the death of Americans in the Communist Party that were still trying to fight on the behalf of the working class. On June 19, 1953, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were executed by electric chair for being so-called commie traitors. Julius Rosenberg was an engineer for the Army Signal Corps and was accused of selling atomic secrets to the Soviets. The person that turned them in was Ethel Rosenberg's brother, David Greenglass. That's how toxic McCarthyism is. It pits families against each other. Ironic, since most politicians run on family values. Now, unless your family includes people that have read a real history book, then the official policy is off with their heads! Now, Greenglass confessed to turning over nuclear secrets through an intermediary and received a 10-year prison sentence. The Rosenbergs were the first U.S. citizens to be convicted and killed for alleged treason during peacetime. The Rosenbergs have been smeared, and some authors have even questioned their Judaism, despite them being pretty devout. There's records of Ethel Rosenberg attending synagogues regularly and teaching her kids about the Jewish faith. They denied her Judaism in an effort to say that communists are godless fiends. Despite the clear evidence that Ethel Rosenberg was a communist and a practicing Jew. In philosophies like socialism and communism, it doesn't matter what you believe in as long as you're not hurting other people with your beliefs. The Rosenbergs were a warning to anyone that wanted to join the Communist Party or the Socialist Party. And considering that Eugene Debs was able to get a million votes from prison, that was a threat to the duopoly that had to wage more wars and resources to steal. It, it, but it's completely acceptable for the CIA to you know, run coups and destabilize nations with puppet regimes. You know, careful, America, I think your hypocrisy is showing. The Red Scare has continued and infected the entertainment industry as well. In order to prevent Hollywood unions from gaining tractions, the House Un-American Activities Committee was investigating the film industry for communists. The film industry was already being censored by the overly religious, taking away things like passionate kissing, smoking, cursing, and anything generally fun from the movies. I mean, movies couldn't really be about the human condition, but just this manufactured view of happiness. In fact, the Oscars were created as a way to keep the industry in line. MGM's owner at the time said, if I got them cups and awards, they'd kill themselves to produce what I wanted. And we still see this mentality today. Social media doesn't really show a lot of subversive content. If you want to go viral, then you have to color within the ideological lines of Democrat versus Republican. 
and anything outside of that is too dangerous for the human mind to absorb. We get little sparks of joy when someone smashes that like button, and those buttons are pushed when we bend a knee to the social media giants. And think about how much Hollywood controls our perceptions of history and mirrors what the State Department wants us to say. How many movies are there about the labor movement? I can't really think of a movie that's a biopic of Eugene Debs or Mother Jones. But I can think of at least 438 films about the American Marine that fought the odds to save freedom. I mean, there's plenty of shows that depict the CIA and the FBI as good guys, and no movies that or shows that show the power of the working class organizing against the oligarchs. The only time we see a positive look at unions is in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, which has an episode titled Bar Association, and it's all about unionizing against a tyrannical boss. McCarthyism went into a, a short hibernation for a part of the 90s. It subtly resurfaced in legislation that justified making the rich richer and keeping the working, working wages stagnant. It also popped in several times when Joe Biden wanted to cut social programs that help low-income and elderly communities. It continued to use fear as a way to justify deregulating large corporate industries for the sake of profits. Instead of blaming the Russians, it was the immigrants. If you didn't fully assimilate into American culture and fawn over Manifest Destiny, then you might as well be a freedom-stealing commie pinko red. After 9-11, McCarthyism added Muslims to the list, and it, it, it was used as a way to pass the Patriot Act so the United States can spy on its own citizens. Now, take that, you filthy reds and browns. You'll never be able to hide now. Huh? And this proves that the only spies in America is the deep state and the State Department spying on their own citizens. And this Islamophobia makes sense considering a lot of Muslim nations before American interference were socialist, secular democracies with more equal rights than America. And that made America look bad considering the PR campaign for the nation had been the greatest country to have ever been formed. Now most recently we have the debunked Russiagate conspiracy that brought McCarthyism back into the fold. You had anchors on CNN and prominent political figures like Hillary Clinton levying false Russian asset claims on outsider candidates. And again, American fell, Americans fell for the false narrative hook, line, and sinker because fear is a powerful motivator. Despite it being proven false, corporate media pundits continue to claim that Russia is the reason that we're all in poverty and can't get health care and continue to experience state-sponsored violence. McCarthyism re remains to be the most insidious piece of propaganda ever invented. It uses fear to convince people to abandon their beliefs and their neighbors. It creates a climate of endless paranoia and justifies stripping freedoms away from us. But if we can get educated and learn the real history of this country, then the propaganda will no longer have any power in our society. McCarthyism has prevented us from getting organized because capitalists know that true change doesn't come from legislation, but the power of the organized working class. So don't forget that. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you smash that like button. <laughs> Uh, and make sure that you guys share this out with as many people as you possibly can over your social feeds or emails, or you can fucking text them this video too. Uh, it, it, it just helps get the word out. And, uh, you know, uh, independent media very much depends on you guys uh, to, to help spread the word and let people know um, that we're talking about these kinds of topics. We're talking about things that corporate mainstream media is not going to cover and, quite frankly, is not interested in covering. Um, so uh, I, I very much appreciate all the people that do regularly share my content out, hit those retweets, uh, those likes, shares, and all that sort of stuff. That uh, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action 
and the very last Friday of every single month. They happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10, and every month it's a brand new show covering a brand new sociopolitical topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email. And I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at slash donate That's k r i s h m o h a n h a h a dot com slash donate. The biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, uh, which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that I just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back. Uh, You also get early access to a certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams, uh, standalone videos, or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do, and then those will be released as premium exclusive of content just for the members uh you get uh addition bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content so tons of things for becoming a uh sustaining member but if sustaining membership isn't in your cards you can also make a one-time donation as well and um i have now included a statement of transparency which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member by 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 getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again it, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full uh, pre-pandemic but uh, because of the the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without uh, without the do- without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right, I've got uh, t-shirts, I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it, it's there probably, kinda. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, it's the merch tab. And uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me. There's seven designs uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up. I'll probably make newer designs and release them as as, as time goes on. Um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate all, 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro Assange um, groups and journalists and activists. Uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gasola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm going to make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more. Then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay-what-you-want price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, You can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, Google Play, all all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate regularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that. 